I return to basics videos, we are going to be using a lot of props to help us modify traditional yoga poses or to help us go deeper into those poses. Now, some of you might have props lying around your house um, for yoga, or you might need to improvise your props as well. So let's go over some of the things that you could use for yoga props. The most common yoga prop is the yoga block, and the yoga block can be used in multiple directions. So you can have it lay flat, you can have it up like this, or you can have it like this, which allows you to do different heights and use it for different things. If you do not have a yoga block, you could use something like a dictionary, or this is my Norton Introduction to Literature book, but some sort of book that is hardcover and heavy the only issue with this is I am more limited in the directions I can have it. I can easily have it this way. Depending how much weight I'm putting on it, I can also have it this way. Uh, but it, it gets a little bit more tricky to use a book because it's not as sturdy. Another common yoga prop is the yoga strap, which allows you to put it around your feet or around your body to help bring you into binds or to help bring things closer to you. It also can help you in restorative postures to just hold a posture for a longer time. If you do not have a yoga strap, you could use a belt or you could use something off like a bathrobe, any kind of rope, uh, but you do want it to be sort of thick and you want it to be secure so you can use it that way. I will say with both the yoga blocks and the yoga straps, if you're really interested in doing quite a bit of yoga, if you have Walmart, TJ Maxx, Kohl's, Amazon, any of those places, typically you can buy two yoga blocks and a strap together as like a beginner set. And I don't think that they're very much. You can also look for them to go on sale. But I would suggest that if you are to buy any props that you buy block and strap because those are the most useful. Which brings me to some of the other props that you might use. One that you'll commonly see is a bolster. Oftentimes they do have these at yoga studios. I think I was practicing yoga for six years before I bought one of these because they just aren't as necessary. They are nice for sitting on. They offer that cushion and they allow you to sit on the edge of it. They're also really nice for things in restorative yoga practices where you're kind of draping over it or using it as a support that way. I will say that bolsters do have um, more firmness to them than some of the suggestions that I'm going to give you as alternatives for bolster. But like I said, you can get away with not having a bolster. You could also technically have blocks with like a blanket over them and you could use that as a bolster if you didn't have one. Another thing that you could use is your pillow. Typically pillows are more squishy and they're not as firm though. Or particularly when it comes to things like sitting on it, you can use a couch cushion because it typically has more support to it. I find them to still be squishy. But like I said, you do not need a yoga bolster when you have these other things around your house. The next prop is a yoga blanket. Honestly, any blanket works. And in fact, oftentimes I don't even use my yoga blanket because it's scratchier. Uh, but the nice thing about a yoga blanket is just the size and the fact that with rolling it, you can kind of put it under different parts of your body. You can use it to just lay on and cushion your mat, any of those type of things. And lastly, that brings us to our yoga mat. A yoga mat of any price range is going to be helpful for you to start. As you get more into yoga, you'll notice the type of things that you need as far as whether you're doing a lot of slipping or whether it's not thick enough, things like that. But again, I started out, I think my first set actually had two yoga blocks, a strap and a yoga mat all together for like 30 bucks or something like that. So starting out pretty much anything. Some people will suggest using a towel. I find it to be very slippery unless you're doing it on a carpet. And then I don't really see the need for having a towel. Uh, if you're doing stuff on hardwood floor though, a towel or a blanket is just gonna slip. Uh, so I would suggest not doing that. 
I would also suggest not wearing socks. If you are going to wear socks, make sure that they are something that has the little things that keep you from slipping on the bottom. This one also has the toes open so you can grip things better. So they do have yoga socks. But even if your feet are cold, if you're going to be doing a lot of standing up postures, I would not wear socks because you can slide and hurt yourself that way. So again, if you're gonna buy any props at all, make sure you buy a block and a strap. And if you are going to be doing quite a bit of yoga, you might consider getting some of the other um, things to help you practice. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of my Return to Basics series. Also make sure you're subscribed so you know when a new video comes out. And leave a comment below if there's a particular type of yoga pose or breathing exercise that you are interested in learning more about. Remember to keep grounding down into your strengths and growing as an individual. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.